This video is the first in a series for Earth 125 Statistics and Data Analysis in the Geosciences class at, at UC Santa Cruz. And first, we'll discuss one very important way of describing numeric data called the central tendency. It's just the middle or the center of a data set, often called the average, and it's very important when we later on will try to compare differences among groups. So any set of data that you have is going to contain many individual observations. So it's important to have some kind of value to summarize the characteristics of that data. And most statistical tests, like the ones we'll discuss throughout this class, are designed to compare differences in these summary values. The two most important ways of summarizing data are the central tendency, which is the typical or average value of data in a data set, and the focus of this video, and the other is the dispersion, which is the variability in values in a data set, and the focus of the next video in this series. So virtually all of the statistical methods that we'll cover later on are intended to compare data between two or more groups. For example, we might want to compare the size of sand in a river to the size of sand on a beach. Of course, we're not going to measure every single sand grain on the beach, so what we really do is to collect a smaller sample and use that to estimate and compare characteristics of the population. So the population is this sort of infinitely large um, universe of sand grains or whatever, and the sample is a small um, set that we've taken um, that we hope is representative. So we'll come back to this idea later on when we discuss statistical hypothesis testing, but first of all, you know, how can we, given some measurements in a sample, quantify the central tendency of that data set. So the most important and most common measure of central tendency is the mean, technically the arithmetic mean, which is given by this symbol X bar. So X bar is the mean of our sample data. And so the mean is simply the sum of all observations in the sample, which is this Greek letter sigma means sum, and then we divide that by the number of observations, or the number of things that we measured in the sample, in this case, n typically given by n. So you might be familiar with this uh, measure under its common name, or the average. This is what you often think of when you think of the average of something. But it's technically the mean, and as I said, specifically the arithmetic mean, because there's actually other types of mean. And so remember that this, um, that we're using this smaller representative sample to estimate characteristics of this large population, which is sort of infinitely big and we can never actually assess. So this X bar is the sample mean, and we're using it as an estimate of the population mean, which is given the Greek letter mu. So the other commonly used measure of central tendency is the median. And as far as I know, there's no sort of standard symbol for this. The median is just the middle value in the series of numbers in a data set. So basically, if you take your numbers, the measurements that you made, and put them in order from smallest to largest, the median will be the middle one. So in this example here, the median is six. There are two numbers smaller than it and two numbers larger than it, so it's the middle number. Uh, if you have an even number of measurements, there is no middle number. Um, so in that case, the median is just the arithmetic mean, the mean which we've covered, discussed in the previous slide, of the two middle numbers. So in this case, there's an even number of measurements, so there's no middle number. So the mean is just the average, or the, so the median is just the average, or the mean of six and eight, so the median in this case is, is seven. And so again, you know, as we go through, remember that this is the sample median, and we're using it as an estimate of the true population mean. So the big question then is, when should you use the mean, and when should you use the median? So let's consider a case where your data follow this symmetrical distribution. So this is a, a histogram, this graph here, and it basically just divides your measurements into bins or groups and then plots the number of values found with each within each bin. So in this case the mean and the median are basically the same thing. So in this case you might as well use the mean as your description of central tendency. If you have a symmetrical distribution where there's a peak in the middle and both sides are around the same size, the mean is the best measure of central tendency. It's the most precise, it, it uses the most information. 
However, if your data are very skewed, and skewed means that the peak is on one side and there's like a long tail on the other, the mean and the median are not going to be the, at the same place. And in fact, the mean is going to be affected much more strongly by these rare outlying points in the long tail. So if the distribution is skewed, the median is the best distribution of central tendency. And so, so basically, you should use mean if your distribution is symmetrical, and you should use median if your distribution is very skewed. And in the middle is going to be some judgment to call where you're going to have your sign. So in, in R, it's very easy to calculate the central tendency because there are built-in functions to do specifically this. So you'll need a group of numbers, which is called a numeric vector in R, as the, the input. And so I'm going to denote that here as x. And it's just x is our, our string of numbers. And so the function to calculate the mean is perhaps not surprisingly called the mean. And so the output will be displayed to the screen, or it can be assigned to a variable. So you just do mean brackets x, and that will calculate the mean of that numeric vector x. So there's one note to be aware of. Um, if there are any missing values in your data, so if your input has measurements, but maybe a couple of them don't have a measurement, so it's missing, R will treat those as NA, or not applicable, and the output of the function mean will also be NA. So in that case, um, you want pr probably want to use, or you may want to remove those NA values when calculating the mean, and so you just specify this NA.RM option equals true. So that will remove the NAs and calculate the mean of the other um, values in the data set. And so the R commands to calculate the median are also called medians, um, and so they're intuitively named, and they work in the same way. Median of x calculates the median value of that numeric vector x, and it will also return NA if there are missing values in that vector, and so you can use NA.RM equals true to remove them before you calculate the median. 